Okay, let's go to First Timothy chapter four, verse seven and eight. Same 
with that same uh, mindset, if you if you try godliness in that same mindset, you won't be able to have a good fight in Christ, in faith. So you must need to have a, a plan how to work towards godliness. It takes a whole whole lot of time to come to that kind of faith in godliness. Amen. So you cannot just do this in, in one or two months. It takes maybe years and years of time. Even you can see pastors being trying to get into this faith for a long time. It takes a long time. So you must plan godliness through prayer, to be in the word of God. Amen? So, and the next one is on verse, let's see, let's, verse 12. Then, and, and Paul is actually warning Timothy that, let no one despise your youth, but an example to the believers in word, in contact, in love, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. So, Paul is telling Timothy, at that point of time, a lot of Judaizers were there, Gnosticism was there, so, so Paul was afraid about Timothy that he will follow these uh, so-called false prophets against what Paul taught them. So, when we actually think about what kind of doctrines we should follow, we have to know that we must follow what God is telling us through the Word. Because we live in a time of, of, of the several doctrines are coming in the church. That was the same thing that is happening with Timothy. He was only 30 years old. He has a lot of intentions. He has a lot of desires. He has a lot of ambitions. But Paul is telling Timothy to have one ambition. One toward godliness. Everything else will come out of that. That's, that's what Pastor was telling us to work on how much God loves you, think about how much God loves you, everything will fruit out of it by itself, automatically. So a lot of times, I believe in my own life, I sometimes I work on the external part, I don't really work on the internal part. But the word of God says that everything should flow out from your heart. And so if it doesn't flow from your heart, what happens is you will give up today or tomorrow because it's not coming from internally. If you have to work, work in the internal, internal world, Fix stabilize your internal world. That's the only way you can uh, face your outside circumstances. Amen. The same thing Paul is telling here to Timothy that these doctrines will come in. People come with different different opinions, different comments, dif different kind of doctrines. But Paul is telling Timothy not to be afraid of that, but stand on God's word. Stand on what I, what I taught you on the true biblical doctrine and. And in the verse 16, he was also warning Timothy, take heed to yourself. First Timothy 4, 16. Take heed to yourself and to the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this, you will save both yourself and those who hear you. So at that point, Timothy was a leader of that church. So Timothy, Paul is basically telling Timothy that you must take care of yourself internally. Otherwise, you will lose yourself and others. Amen? So the Paul is warning Timothy again and again because he knew this, and we are living in the in the age of age. Our Lord is coming soon, and at the end of times, people will come. We, we don't know what to believe at this point in time. So if you're not marinating in the Word of God, you will most likely to follow one of those doctrines, but you don't even know it. For example, if you don't have a prayer life, then you don't know. Then the Holy Spirit is not there to help you. To remind you that this is a false doctrine. Amen? We can see, so a lot of times if we look at mega churches or, or even churches in small, even in Malala churches, I see we have things that we hold on to so closely that it's not in the Word of God. Amen? <coughs> There's so many things that we hold so much into our heart, but it's not in the Word of God. Because, because someone has taught us to, because we are searching the scriptures for the right information. Amen? So we hold our traditions against someone else, so that will make that person not to come to our church or our services because we hold it our tradition because we think it's right. According to the scriptures, these things are not right, right? So we must search our doctrines according to the word of God and say it's true, if it's if it's genuine, amen. And at last last Paul is telling them to guard your faith. Guard your faith. Bible we read that we read the scriptures that if you guard your faith until the end, then you will be saved. I mean, just think about it. Right before, if you lose your faith right before that time when Jesus comes, 
All that you did for whatever time you've been saved is, is going to be lost. So Paul is telling Timothy to, to guard your faith. No matter how much it costs to guard your faith. Because that's what God has given to you. That. Amen? So, the gospel of Jesus Christ should renew our hearts daily. I preach to myself most of the days of the week the gospel to myself. Because I need to remind myself that how much God loves me. Because when I sin, when I struggle, when I do, when I do, when I do, I do this and that, they will try to tell me that I'm not loved. I'm not saved. I've got my salvation. I've got my inheritance that I have in Christ. I've got all these things in my life, but I need to preach myself the gospel to myself that Jesus loves me. He paid it in full. He paid all of it. My present, my past, my past and present future sins also, all forgiven in Jesus Christ. God has given me that freedom to follow Christ fully. That's what we read in Galatians, right? The, the Paul is telling God or foolish Galatians who has binded you up again with the traditions in what Christ has already set you free. So let us get free from all this. Let us move into God's presence and what the Spirit of the Lord wants us to do. Amen? See, we can, the reason that I'm saying this, we can, we can, years, year after year, we can, we can follow a pattern of worship, a pattern of leadership that is not godly. And we can feel right about it. Amen? So we want to follow a pattern that is what the Spirit of the Lord is telling us to move. <laughs> maybe, maybe it be contrary to everybody else is saying. Bible says, what the uh, scripture says, the way to the hell is wide and open. The way to life is now is short. So if, if God is telling you something to do, most of the time people will be against you. Because the devil knows that's the right path to go. We can see, in, even in American churches, I don't know about India so much, but in American, American churches, we can see a bunch of people are following one path. If there's a mega church, you everybody just follow that path. But according to scriptures, the way to the hell is wide open. There's no restrictions, there's nothing, there's nothing, there's no rules, there's no regulations, there's nothing, there's no scriptures, there's no doctrine. But the Bible says the way to the life Amen. is narrow. It's hard. It's hard to walk in, and nobody will follow that. So when, so when, when we are introduced to a new doctrine, like Paul is telling to Timothy, that be careful. Amen. This may, this may not be God. The first thing I will do is I will go to the scriptures, see what the word of the Lord is saying. Amen. We must have that courage in this generation to stand for the true word of God. As youngsters, I want to encourage you too. Stand for the word. You might be, there was times, I'm pretty sure all of you have, have all of you guys have testimonies where you, you felt alone because you were standing for the truth. People will make fun of you, but at the end, you will save your soul. And you will have a reward in heaven. At that point, in order you remember what, at that point in heaven, you will be so, you will be so joyful that you will not remember any of these things. So we, we only see we only see a little bit of our existence. God is God exists outside time. So I don't know how I, I should have brought up why. Okay, let's see. Okay, let's see. This is your this is your timeline. Okay? I'm wearing this from Francis Chan. So you know you live forever, right? You you don't live here on earth for a few years, 50, 60, 80 years. But by by God's design, you will live, you will die whenever God when it's in God's time. Then after that, either you will move to one one place or another place. So just say this is your timeline in Earth. Okay. No, this is your eternal life. Okay. This is the time where you live in Earth. Just think about it. You gotta imagine this a little bit. Anybody see? It? Say this is your timeline. I should, I should buy a book. This is your timeline, eternal timeline. And think about this is your time here on earth. And maybe 80 years or 90 years. And the Bible tells me what you do here determines what, how you live here. Amen. Right? So, so many, of, so many of us, including myself, we only think about just this part. 
we barely think about the eternal part. But Bible specifically tells me whatever I do here will tell me what I'm going to do here. Right? So if you live a godly life here, with godliness in your life, you will live eternally. Amen? Amen. So if you, if, you, if you live wrongfully here, then you know what's going to happen, right? So the, whatever the decisions that you make here, some of us will think, okay, I'm going to get a job, I'm going to get education, I'm going to move from here to here. Just think about how short that is. By the time you get 80, 80 or 90 or 100 years old, your life will be gone. So this, think about this part. I used to watch that video all the time, but Francis I used to watch that all the time. Just think about how short your life is. And, some of, and if you don't do nothing at that time for the Lord, think about how you're going to spend your eternity. So think about that. So, so that's my encouragement to you guys. It's just like Paul is what he tell you guard yourself, guard your faith. Guard, guard what God has invested in your life. Amen? Let's close your eyes here. Just think about what the Lord told you. I know it's a short message, but... I just want to say that whatever, I don't know what, what's going on in your life right now, but just... Just be very careful in this world. Just be very careful. As answers, we are prone to go after other things that doesn't really, it's not really godly, it's not really lead us to godliness, but oh, let us have that faith in God for what He has done in our lives. Let us invest Toward Godliness. Jesus, you merciful God. God loves an humble heart. God loves a broken spirit. 